list customization. So it's a, it's a relatively basic story you're going to tell, but it's always good to to reiterate or to reshow you, to refresh your brain and show you also a bit of um, how you can use that these amazing demos that uh, Chris is making and how to actually apply them to your site without uh, using the user interface. So the idea is that I will uh, um, obviously use PMP PowerShell. I have the, the window open on my screen. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, this is the new Windows terminal or Microsoft terminal, I think it's called. I strongly recommend that. It's actually a much better experience compared to all the other PowerShell environments. Um, and not only PowerShell, this also runs the command prompt and Linux, even if you want to. So that was a little sidetrack. So I'm connected to my site. The site is, uh, is hovering here behind me uh, as a standard uh, empty SharePoint site, and I will start to create first my list. And um, for that, I use the commandlet new PNP list. I give it a title, I say projects, and I want it on the quick launch, and the template is a generic list. So because we're using the, uh, the APIs behind the scenes, uh, in the user interface, you will see this called a custom list. Uh, in the APIs, it's called a generic list. So that's why there is generic list here. Press enter and it will uh, create a site. You don't have to specify the URL. It will always do default to slash lists and then the name of the, of the list. So if I reload this page, there should be my project here. And I should have called it projects, but that's okay. You can call it project. Now I want to add a field to it. So add PMP field uh, to my list project that I just created. As long as you don't have any spaces in your title, you don't have to put uh, quotes around it. You, um, so just if the name is just uh, without spaces, just enter the name of the, of the of the list here. Then the display name of the field will be a project name. You see that I put a space in the display name, so I put quotes around it. And then I say my internal name is project name without a space. And the type of the field is text. Press enter and the field is being added to the list. Now, if I reload this page now, you will see that the list, the field is not part of my no. view. So the idea now is that I will, uh, you can either go to like the settings of the list in the user interface and add the, uh, uh, of the view and then add that field to your view, but obviously you can also use PNP PowerShell. So set PNP view. Well, first, let's have a look at the views that we have available. So if I do get PNP view and it wants the name of the list project, you see there's basically only one view and it is one is called all items, the one we actually are looking at right now. So that one I will use. So set PNP view, I'm updating the view. I say the list project, identity of the view is all items. And then I say, which fields do I want in there? So I want the title field in there and the project name field in there. And press enter. And now my field has been added to this view. So if I reload, you see the title and the project name field in there. Now, this is uh, two commands I did. Obviously, there is a way of doing it actually a bit easier. So if I go back in my history, add PNP field. Now I say not project name, but project manager. I'm adding, adding another field here, project manager. And there is an option saying add it to default view. Press enter. If I reload this, there's my project manager. If I'm not happy with the order of these columns, say I want to move the project manager before the project name field, I can also use the set PNP field uh, view. Uh, uh, functionality. So say I want to put project manager in front of it, then I change the order of this list of fields here. I say here, project manager goes before the project name. Reload. And now project manager is standing before project name. So that's a very simple way of creating a list, adding columns to it, and we support basically all, all column types here. Now, let me, for, for demo reasons, add a couple of items to this, um, to this, it, to this list. And then a, a nice simple way of actually adding items is like, say, I want to have uh, three items called with the title A, B, and C. So A, A, come on, cat focus on, B, C. This is an array, piping that to. This is a, uh, a shortcut for for each, 
for each object. For each object is a PowerShell command, but you can use the shortcut percent. And then I say add PNP list item to the list project. And then I set a value of the title field equals to, and then the dollar equals, and I realized there's this PNP PowerShell logo there. Um, so hopefully you can see it to the, and this dollar underscore reflects to the current item I'm processing. So it goes for first A, then B, then C. And in the first time it will be A, the second time it will be B, the third time it will be C. So put a closing this one, and then I'm closing the for each loop there. That one, I close it, press enter. Creates A, creates B, creates C. You see that the UI is already behind the screens updating here. Let's force it. And there's my three items here. So there's a very easy way to, uh, yeah, add a couple of test items to uh, to a list. And you can officially set multiple columns in, a, in in one go if you want to do that like that. Now, Chris showed this alternate row formatting thing. So if I, uh, for instance, go to a list that I already have here, this has alternate row formatting uh, applied to the view. Say so I go to format current view and I just copy this uh, wonderful readable JSON out of it and uh, have it copied in my clipboard right now. So I want to use that one in PowerShell. So the way to do it is like uh, you create a variable, JSON, and say get clipboard, and you want it in a uh, role. So now if I just enter this one on an empty line, I press enter, you will see that my JSON is outputted. So the JSON that I copied to my clipboard is now part of this, is now in stored in that variable. So now I will update, I go back to my project list here, and I do another time get PNP view. Uh, I should do list. Can I specify that directly? So I want to get hold of that. I want to update this view, the all items view. So what I will do, I will put it into a variable because I can also specify identity. So now I will only retrieve the all items view and put it into the variable view. So there we have that view. And what you can do in PowerShell, you can say, okay, listen, PowerShell, what kind of properties does this object have? And if I do get member, you see a whole list of properties here. And one of them, if I scroll up a bit, is custom formatter. And that is the one we are going to set. So I will up, I want to update the view because this is where the JSON, if you set the JSON uh, uh, through the UI, it will end up in this property, which is a string. So what I will do now is I will update my view and add that JSON file. Uh, and it can be, of course, any formatter for any view um, into my, uh, of update my view with that JSON. So again, we're using the set PMP view commandlet list project, oh, not project, paste, project, identity, all items, values, and then I say custom formatter. Now, you would be tempted to, to write JSON here. If I do that, it will actually go wrong. Uh, the commandlet has um, uh, tries to actually take this as an object and goes wrong. It needs a string, so we're going to force it to a string. So in PowerShell, if you write something like this, it will force it as a string and will take the value of this variable and put it into these uh, quotes here. So if I press enter now, the view has been updated, and if I refresh, refresh this view, you will see that it has alternate row formatting. So this is a very simple way of actually getting those JSON files out there. So basically, the, the easiest way, if you want to play around with the samples that Chris made, um, uh, is basically get a um, copy of that repository in your file system, create a list, navigate to the folder, and use these command lists to very simply apply these JSON files to your list and just play around with them, see what they do, instead of like opening the file, copying the contents, pasting it, etc. You can, of course, also get hold of an existing list, an existing view, take the value of this custom formatter property, um, put it into a variable, and then apply it to another list. And another way, um, if you want to do a column formatter, it's the same idea. So if you have a field, the field also has a custom formatter property. So you update the field and you set the custom formatter property to that value, and it will use that custom formatter for that field. So there's a very simple way of, of getting data out of there. Uh, the last thing I want to show is 
and a little tip if you want to move a list from one side to another, but just a single list and nothing else, there is actually a relatively easy way for you to export a list to a provisioning template and just that specific list, and that is export PNP list to provisioning template. So if I say, what is my list called? The list is called project, and I want to output it to my list XML. It's the whole engine behind the scenes, but it will only do that specific list that you specified, in this case, the project list. So we'll take a bit, it's almost done, there we go. And if I open this in Visual Studio Code, you see the list here, and here you see actually the casting formatter with the uh, JSON that we just applied to that list. So this is just the just that single list in there. So this is a very easy way of like getting me the whole list and move the whole list with all the columns and formatting and everything over from one side to the other, or make a copy of a list. You can just apply the same thing to the same site, but you can say project two, and then update the URL also here, and then apply the same the, the list to the same site, and you will have a copy of that list. That was it for me. Now, Irvin, I will challenge you live on the on the on the PowerShell because somebody was saying that oh, Irvin knows all of the PowerShell command lines and, and parameters. <laughs> but it's like yeah, he wrote most of them, so it's fine. But what about lists with content? Not just the configuration, but lists with content. Uh, just yeah. because somebody is thinking that immediately as a, a follow-up question. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to copy a list with content. The, yes. the, the provisioning engine allows you to export, uh, but then you will have the full engine, not this export uh, commandlet here. We have the full engine. We allow you to specify an, um, a, a list and include its content based on a camel query that you do. You yes. can say all, or you can define a camel query. It goes a bit too far right now to actually go you through how to set it up, but there is a way of doing that in the... Yes. the and I think we have a demo actually on that one from Autumn uh, in, in the YouTube channel, so you should be able to find that. Um, yep. I think we, we showed the configuration files and all of that. And um, also one question, sorry, Erwin there, uh, the pra, pra, Prasad is asking how system recognize where the list to be created with site without the site URL parameter. You connected ah. the site. So yes, that's, that's I, I, show, I, I, I didn't show that yeah. part. Yeah. You do, Please con do. You, you, the, the PMP PowerShell commands always work on the context of a single site. So you do get uh, connect PMP online URL, and then this is the URL of your site. So in this case, it was uh, sharepoint.com slash sites demo one. Uh, and then I connected a specific site. You actually see that in my prompt here. This is my tenant name. This is the site I'm connected to. Um, and then that's how I can see where I am. And that's how the, the commanders know where the um, uh, list is being applied to. And there's a one more from Mugilan. Um, can you provision the list as a copy by passing a list name and the URL as a parameter, or how would you do that? I think it's updating the XML file. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's updating the XML file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's no copy list command with uh, currently. Yep. And the last question from Mike, and then we go to the AC's uh, screen. I missed the beginning, so I apologize. Does this require SharePoint admin privileges, or are site admin okay? Really Side important question. Side, Side admin admin is okay. Yes, because the BMP PowerShell doesn't connect to the tenant admin site, it connects to the actual site. And as long as you have the permission to the site collection, yeah, you're good to go to operate within the site collection. So, yep. yes. So it's a slightly different, let's say, approach than with the tenant admin. To be fair, just to be super clear, there are admin operations in the PMP PowerShell as well, matching admin operations as within the SharePoint Online PowerShell, and those requires a tenant admin permission. So everything is secure and, and there's no kind of hidden tricks from that perspective. Indeed, those, those commanders are actually marked as such. So, um, we see if we say uh, tenant recycle bin item. The well, most of them actually have the word tenant in them. <laughs> That's I would say is the, the biggest giveaway. Yeah. Um, uh, the right now in the, the help oh, That's interesting. Actually, I was that dropped off. We have to check that. But um, there should be a mentioning that it requires uh, that you need tenant level access to um, yeah. execute these commandlets. 
And then there's a to still uh, follow up on the, on the question. So the site owner is not sufficient. You have to be, if you operate on a site collection level, you need to be a site collection administrator. Uh, now, the contribute permission is not necessarily sufficient uh, because some of the powers or commandments or the behind of the scenes, the code actually operates potentially in the site collection level as well, right? Yes. So that, that explains uh, because somebody is saying about the PMP file. Thank you, Irvin. Uh, awesome recap. I think the, the PMP powers are so widely used, but it, it's it's always good to recap uh, the basics and basic structure because it's so, so, so powerful. And thank you everybody for being part of uh, writing that and contributing on that open source uh, project as well. Mm -hmm.